When I'm in a cave, I often find myself wondering, what drove these people to go so deep? I study some of the oldest art in the world, but what I'm interested in is the development of the modern mind. We've been building on the mental achievements of those who came before us for so long that it's easy to forget that certain abilities haven't already existed. It became possible for the first time for a message to be transmitted and preserved in time. Deep in the heart of the Yorkshire Dales lies Victoria Cave, a mysterious natural wonder that was uncovered quite by chance. In 1837, while on a routine rabbit hunt, local gamekeeper Michael Horner and his companions stumbled upon a concealed fissure behind a cluster of limestone boulders. Little did they know, their accidental find would open the door to a subterranean world brimming with ancient secrets, offering an unprecedented glimpse into England's prehistoric past. We're all fascinated by where did we come from and, you know, we want to understand more about that story. This discovery not only sparked curiosity, but also launched a series of explorations that would forever change our understanding of human and animal history in the region. The entrance, clogged with limestone deposits and rubble, gave a hint of the untouched secrets that lay within. When Horner and his group first stepped inside, they found themselves in a large chamber adorned with stalactites and stalagmites, indicating that the cave had remained undisturbed for thousands of years. This discovery quickly caught the attention of local naturalists and archaeologists, all eager to delve into its depths and uncover its secrets. What was somebody doing down there with a torturous stone lamp? This is the kind of question that I'm trying to answer with my research. By the 1840s, Victoria Cave had become a significant site of interest for both archaeologists and paleontologists. The Yorkshire Philosophical Society, recognizing the cave's potential to provide insights into the ancient past, organized the first systematic excavation in 1844. This early exploration set the stage for the cave to become one of the key sites for understanding the prehistoric and paleontological history of the region. Building on the exploration into Victoria Cave's discovery and its initial significance, it becomes clear that the cave's contents offer a vivid snapshot into the lives of both the humans and animals that once frequented this site. Delving deeper, the findings from Victoria Cave can be organized into three revealing phases, Paleolithic tools, Pleistocene fauna, and Roman artifacts. Each phase not only illuminates specific historical periods, but also mirrors broader trends in human behavior. We start finding burials, and not just burials, but burials with grave goods in them. The Paleolithic tools found in the cave, dating back around 12,000 to 13,000 years ago, include flint blades and scrapers. These tools were essential for butchering animals, crafting clothing and other survival tasks, indicating that prehistoric humans used the cave as a temporary shelter during their hunting trips. This suggests that herds of reindeer and other animals grazed in the tundra-like environment outside, drawing hunters to the area. What's particularly fascinating is the evidence of tool-making within the cave itself, suggesting it served not just as a shelter, but also as a workshop or base camp. Here, prehistoric humans could manufacture and repair their tools, benefiting from the cave's natural protection from the elements and its strategic vantage point over the valley, an ideal spot for monitoring game movements. Moving to the Pleistocene fauna, the remains found paint a picture of a cold, open landscape, vastly different from today's lush Yorkshire Dales. Species like the woolly rhinoceros, reindeer and Irish elk adapted to survive harsh winters with their thick fur and fat reserves. Among the most evocative finds are the bones of the woolly rhinoceros, an animal with no modern equivalent in Britain, but closely related to the smaller, modern Sumatran rhinoceros, this discovery underlines the dramatic shifts in climate and habitat that have occurred since the Ice Age and highlights the changes in megafauna populations over the years. The cave's later layers reveal a different type of use with the discovery of Roman coins and ornate brooches from around the 1st to the 4th centuries AD. These artifacts indicate that the cave was not merely a habitation site, but also held significance for ritual or ceremonial purposes. The coins and jewelry might have been offerings, perhaps related to a cult or as part of local religious practices that revered natural springs or caves as sacred sites. This continuity of use from a prehistoric shelter to a Roman ceremonial site is a pattern seen throughout Europe, 
where natural features like caves and springs were consistently revered across vastly different cultures and epochs. Furthermore, when comparing the use of Victoria Cave with other contemporary sites, such as the Chauvet Cave in France, a fascinating pattern in human behavior emerges. Rock art provides us with a window into the minds of these people. While both caves contain prehistoric art and artifacts, Victoria Cave primarily served practical purposes such as shelter and tool production. In contrast, Chauvet Cave is renowned for its spectacular Paleolithic cave paintings. So this is really about our common humanity. This is really about our own collective heritage. This comparison highlights the diverse ways in which prehistoric humans interacted with their environments. The exploration of Victoria Cave not only revealed a storied past, but also had a significant impact on the field of archaeology, particularly influencing how archaeologists understand and interpret historical layers. The meticulous excavation and recording methods employed in the 19th century were pivotal. They focused particularly on stratigraphy, the study of rock layers and their order, which allowed them to establish a clearer timeline of human and animal activity in the region. This methodical approach helped foster more nuanced interpretations of archaeological sites, setting new standards in the field. Exploration and excavation within Victoria Cave did not cease with these initial efforts, but continued sporadically throughout the late 19th and 20th centuries. Each phase of excavation added new layers of understanding about human history encapsulated within its walls. With the advent of modern archaeological techniques, such as radiocarbon dating and DNA analysis, our grasp of the past has become even more refined. These technologies have provided archaeologists with tools to date artifacts and remains with greater precision. Through such ongoing explorations, Victoria Cave continues to be a crucial site for piecing together human history. Continuing our exploration of significant archaeological sites, let's delve into Chauvet Cave, located in the Ardèche region of southern France. This cave, discovered in 1994 by Jean-Marie Chauvet and his team, is a treasure trove of Paleolithic art, housing some of the oldest and most remarkable prehistoric artworks known to humanity. Most of the rock art from the prehistoric times was done long before, you know, national borders, ethnic boundaries. The walls of Chauvet Cave are adorned with vivid paintings and engravings, offering a unique window into the lives and beliefs of early humans who lived around 30,000 to 32,000 years ago. The discovery of the cave was somewhat accidental. On December 18, 1994, Jean-Marie Chauvet, along with Eliette Brunel and Christian Hilaire, felt a draft emanating from a cliff, prompting them to investigate further. They discovered a narrow passage that led to a network of chambers that had been sealed by a rock slide around 25,000 years ago, which helped preserve its contents in exceptional condition. Chauvet Cave is renowned not just for the antiquity of its art, but also for the variety it contains. The cave walls feature over 1,000 images depicting a wide range of subjects, including horses, lions, rhinos, bison, mammoths, and even human figures. These images are rendered with astonishing detail and sophistication, employing advanced artistic techniques that convey depth and motion. For instance, the artists used perspective drawing and took advantage of the cave's natural contours to enhance the images, giving a three-dimensional effect to the depicted animals. The techniques used at Chauvet were ahead of their time. The artists utilized charcoal and red ochre to create rich colors and employed shadows and shading to bring a dynamic quality to their creations. Some figures were even painted in a series of superimposed images, creating an effect similar to the sequential frames of a film, giving the impression of movement. Chauvet Cave is a pivotal site for studying the Aurignacian culture, known for its advanced tools and artistic expression. The well-preserved artwork offers insights not only into the artistic practices, but also into the social and spiritual lives of its creators. Radiocarbon dating indicates that the earliest paintings were created around 32,000 years ago, making them some of the oldest known human-created artworks. The depiction of predatory animals and rare human-animal hybrid figures suggests a complex belief system that possibly included shamanic elements, indicative of a sophisticated cognitive ability and a rich cultural tradition. Given the fragile nature of the cave's environment, Chauvet Cave is not open to the public to ensure its preservation for future generations. Instead, a replica cave known as the Pondark Cavern was opened in 2015, 
allowing visitors to experience a faithful reproduction of the artwork and cave conditions.